Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com with Dave's Faves. Now, my last Dave's Fave, number, what was it, 242 or something like that? Holy Moses, was Elgar's The Apostles. So I need to clean my ears out with Poulenc. Oh, thank God. You know, it's fascinating. They were both Catholic. They both wrote Catholic choral works. And boy, does Poulenc not sound like Elgar kind of fascinating, isn't it? We're not talking about choral music here. This is a wonderful disc of, of four works, actually, chamber and orchestral pieces. And the, the nifty thing about it, about this particular recording, um, featuring Mark Bebbington piano with the Royal Philharmonic under Jan Latham Koenig, um, is that you get the Concert Champêtre in its piano version, and it is the only decent recording of the piano version. Other pianists have tried it. It never works. It's, you know, the Concert Champêtre is one of the most delightful, charming, marvelous, tuneful, sunny, brilliant, uh, emotionally affecting. Oh, it's just... It's just fabulous. It's absolutely fabulous. One of the great concertos, but it almost never works. I mean, on recordings, it tends to work better than it does live. Um, I've only seen it live once, and it was it didn't work. And you know, it really is. It really is astonishing. It also makes a great ringtone. Oh my goodness! You know, just the opening. You could do it that way, or. You can do the finale, which is even better as a ringtone. I mean, it's just when that thing goes off, you can't miss it. And everyone turns around and goes, oh, it makes you smile. What's the problem with the Concert Champagne? Well, it's really very simple. You got to have the right solo instrument. It was written for Wanda Landowska and her harpsichord, her harpsichord. She had this this Gazunta Plyel harpsichord that sounded like a grand piano. That was the point. It had a zillion bells and whistles and things, and it was loud. So balance wasn't an issue. For reasons that absolutely passeth understanding, most recordings these days use a like period instrument with a teeny, teeny, tiny tone. And it doesn't work, and they can't mic it properly, and the engineers screw it up, and, and then, you know, the harpsichord sounds like it, you know, it has, you know, harpsichords are noisy. You know, when you take your fingers off them, they reset, they go like this, and, you know, so you have all that performance noise. You know, the best versions are the ones that were made in Poulenc's own lifetime with, like, Amy Van Deville and whatnot on Warner because they had the right instrument. Or or Susanna Ruzichkova, which is the best of all, on harpsichord with 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 Kurt Zanderling, of all people, that famous Poulankian, Woo! with a Czech fill. It's fabulous. You know, those are the recordings you need to get because they have the right instrument. But if you're not going to have the right instrument, Poulank knew you weren't going to have the right instrument. So he said, play it on a piano. Well, that offers problems of its own for reasons I don't quite understand. Usually, it's not the pianist's fault. It's just that the conductor sucks and the orchestra is lousy. And it just all sounds terribly amateurish. It really does. So kudos to Mr. Mark Bebbington, who really nails the Concert Champêtre on the piano. Now, I tend to prefer it on a harpsichord just because, you know, it sounds so tangy and lovely the way Poulenc originally wrote it. But if you're going to play it on the piano, you got to play it like a piano. You can't pretend you want your piano to sound like a harpsichord and poke at it rather than playing it. And Bebbington doesn't do that. It's a beautiful pianistic performance that makes the best case for it as a piano concerto. Now, you also get on this disc Poulenc's lovely piano concerto, which is just such a wonderful piece. I just adore it. And aside from that, you get two chamber works. You get the trio for piano, oboe, and bassoon, which is fantastic fantastically played here. Boy, is this a good performance. You know, nowadays, because of period instruments and because it's such a neoclassical object, you know, particularly the finale, you know, oh, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. They play it too fast. It has to breathe. It has to breathe. You have to hear all those piquant harmonies and the wonderful, wonderful timbres of the wind instruments. No, you know, I mean, 
performances today these days, the ones I've heard have been so insensitive to the piece. This is not. This is beautiful. This takes the time to be perky and charming and just, just entirely entrancing. I mean, that's what the music should be. And you also get the oboe sonata. The oboist here, by the way, is John Roberts, who is superb. And the oboe sonata is really a beautiful piece. It's very elegiac. Um, it begins with an elegy, then there's a scherzo, and then a deploration, you know, a funeral oration of, of sorts. And so it's a very, very moody and tender work, actually. Very beautiful, and it's wonderfully performed here. And Bebbington shows off his skills, both as soloist in the two concerti and as accompanist in the two sonatas with winds, making this a fabulous record. It's on the Resonus, Resonus label, R-E-S-O-N-U-S, Rezonus, Rezonus, Resonus, Rosonus, Res, here, you look at it. What is that? I don't know what that is. You know, some of these labels, I don't know where they come up with these names. It's Resonus. I mean, they pronounce it however they pronounce it. But, you know, and it has this this logo that I guess is an R. I, I, I make our lives easy, record people. Please, 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 I'm begging you. Don't be so esoteric that no one can figure out who you are or what you're doing. Because this is a wonderful disc and it deserves attention. It really does. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.